Hello, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be covering management of dog bites. In this video, we're going to give a brief background of what dog bites involve, how to assess the patient, we'll then cover the risks that dog bites present, and finally, we'll go over management and treatment options. So first of all, what kinds of dog bites are there? Well, bite wounds can take a number of forms, including lacerations, puncture wounds, or crush or degloving injuries. Dog bites characteristically involve puncture wounds from the canine teeth, which anchor the victim whilst the other teeth bite, shear, and tear the tissues, causing structural damage. And they're the most common type of mammal bite. So let's move on now and briefly discuss assessment of dog bite wounds. So when assessing the patient, it's important to record the circumstances under which the bite occurred, including when it happened, whether the dog was domesticated or wild, and how the dog appeared. So by this, I mean, was it a healthy looking dog? And you also want to know whether the attack was provoked or not. You should then take a full set of observations from the patient, including their temperature, and ensure that you examine the bite using gloves. Bearing in mind that deep layers of tissue may move with positional changes after the bite injury, therefore disguising the true depth of the wound. When you document, make sure that you describe the size, depth and location of the wound and if possible with the consent of the patient, try to take a photographic image of the wound and store it in the patient's electronic records if available. It will be important to also record if there is any non-visible tissue damage, any nerve or tendon damage, as well as involvement of muscles, bones, joints or blood vessels. It's then important to assess neurovascular function in the area distal to the bite. You want to check the pulses and sensation, and then you want to assess the range and movement of any adjacent joints and look for any foreign bodies that might be present in the wound. Finally, you want to assess for any signs of infection. So for example, things like redness, swelling, induration or necrotic tissue, and purulent discharge, as well as any spreading cellulitis. If the patient has a facial bite, then make sure you perform an interoral examination to exclude cheek lacerations communicating with the oral cavity. So we're going to move on now and discuss the risks of dog bites. And one of the most important risks from a dog bite is bacterial infection, especially if there's a break in the skin. Some of the infective complications resulting from bite wounds include things like abscesses, tenosynovitis, septic arthritis, osteomyelitis, which is infection of the bone, and more distant spread of the infection to other organs of the body, which could cause sepsis. Another risk is that of tetanus, especially if the wound is a puncture wound and it gets dirt in it. Rabies in the UK is very rare because there's no indigenous rabies. However, if you're in a country where rabies is endemic, then you'll need to seek urgent medical attention for post-exposure prophylaxis. And I've included a link in the description box of this video from the WHO for more information on the risk of rabies based on individual countries. So finally, let's wrap up this video by talking about management and treatment of a dog bite. So first of all, you want to make sure you remove any foreign bodies, so for example, teeth or dirt from the wound. You want to encourage a wound that has just occurred to bleed unless it's already bleeding freely. Once you've done this, you want to make sure that you irrigate the wound fully with warm water that is running, and you want to do this for several minutes. You then need to consider the need for debridement, which is essentially where the skin is cleaned and any dead skin is removed. This is typically done by the plastic surgery team or it can be done in the emergency department. You then want to advise appropriate analgesia, so things like ibuprofen or paracetamol for pain relief if needed, or something stronger like morphine if required. You need to ensure that you refer to the emergency department for further assessment and management if wound closure is thought to be necessary. And in terms of antibiotics, well, for an animal bite, you can prescribe prophylactic antibiotics if it penetrated vital tissues, caused significant damage, or the wound is contaminated or involves high risk areas of skin, or if the person is at risk of wound infections. In terms of antibiotics, well, for animal bites such as a dog, empirical antibiotic treatment usually involves coamoxiclav for seven days in an adult, or if the patient is penicillin allergic, something like doxycycline combined with metronidazole. It'd also be important to consider the need for tetanus prophylaxis, as well as rabies, depending on the area that you're in. This brings us to the end of the video, which I hope was helpful and informative. As ever, if you did enjoy the video, please remember to like it and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for weekly medical education videos. Any questions, comments, queries, 
please leave them in the comments section below. And also check out the description box of this video where I've posted a whole host of useful links, including links to patient information leaflets, information on rabies, as well as direct links to the NHS website. Thanks again for watching and until next time, bye.